Good evening campers, it's me Kira and today we are going to talk about the Czech novel, technically it's French, The Unbearable Lightness of Being by Milan Kundera. Let's discuss that. The Unbearable Lightness of Being was written in Czech. However, Kundera was exiled from Czechoslovakia and has been living in France ever since. He obtained citizenship in 1981 and sees himself as a French writer and deems his works to be considered French literature, not Czech. However, his Czech citizenship was restored in 2019, but I believe Kundera is still very arm's distance from the Czech Republic, never really visiting, refusing to accept awards, medals and accolades. As such, the Czech Republic, or as it's known now, Czechia's most famous author doesn't even see himself as Czech. The Unbearable Likeness of Being is a philosophical work. It is a Kunderan exercise into arguing against a Nietzschean concept. If you've not read this, I can see you already putting your hands up and be like, no, 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 this is like way too much already. But I have to stress, the first page, there is a strong, clear outline, introduction, and thesis that Kundera provides you. And throughout the novel, Kandira interrupts the text itself to expand and explain his own premise. It's a Nietzschean book that isn't about Nietzsche, so if you're not a Nietzschean schlub, you're going to be quite fine. Kandira explains simply and eloquently this idea of lightness and why it is unbearable and it really eases you in as a reader. Another way the readers might ease themselves in is by watching the film but be aware Kandira hated the film so much that he refused for any of his other works to be adapted. Jinkies. The aim of this novel is for Kandira to argue against the idea idea that life is to continually repeat itself. Kandira sees that we are weighed down within this timeline, that there are no other possibilities, and therefore eternal recurrence can never occur. Eternal occurrence is the idea that the events in the universe have already happened and will continue to happen ad infinium. The unbearable lightness that is featured within this title is the lightness of human choice and human existence. Lightness interpreted by Kundera is a sense of freedom. It is unpredictable and it lacks burden. It's a carefree, spontaneous way of living your life. It is literally a YOLO. Lightness within this book is an argument not against the continuation of life, but the continuity of life. The unbearable lightness of being is knowing that every action that you do ultimately ends with you. Kandira believes, or if not, he conjectures that your life is hindered not by the actions that you make, but by its finality. In talking about the continuation, the continuity, and the fact that time is to ultimately end for all of us, time is a very major factor here. To give you an example, just to show you how Kadira really lulls you into this narrative and really allows you to explore these philosophical concepts in a humorous and light-hearted way. Thomas is sleeping with his mistress, Sabina. He's looking for momentary pleasures and sees that the relationship that he has with Sabina is very different from his wife, Teresa, who ultimately knows about this affair. Throughout the carefree sexual moment, Thomas is grounding himself in time. He is constantly checking his watch to the dismissal of Sabina. Later on, that watch is going to go. And metaphorically, Thomas has now moved from a state of lightness to one of heaviness because he's stuck on this time frame. He can't navigate around the way that he wants to. He's burdened by it. I will see many characters move from one state to another. And let's focus on Thomas a little bit more. Thomas is a womanizer. And this is in help of the fact that Thomas views sex and love as two very different things. Of course he loves his wife, Teresa, but he wants to have sex with other women. This carefree laissez-faire persona that Thomas puts on only comes out because of the ramifications of living a life of heaviness. In fact, Thomas was married before, but due to a divorce, lost everything. He's only carefree because all of the structures around him, and in fact, if you think about it, Thomas only falls in love with Teresa because she physically will not leave the bed after having a bout 
of illness. He wants to just have a carefree relationship with her, but the fact that she's bound to that bed, he can't be carefree with someone who physically cannot leave the house. Let's talk about Teresa, who seems as though she is burdened with heaviness, but throughout the novel, she becomes more light, and in that lightness, doesn't find joy, doesn't find entertainment like Thomas. Instead, she finds alienation and isolation. Arguably, Teresa is more carefree under the burden of heaviness because she never condemns Thomas for having sex with other people. And in these vivid dream sequences that are littered throughout the novel, Teresa sees Thomas of having all the power. She is completely submissive, but never feels as though there's a burden on her. In fact, she finds it quite liberating. We can't talk about Teresa without talking about the other love interest of Thomas, Sabina, who within her carefree escapades of Thomas begins to paint, and within that painting subsequently discovers that she can liberate herself from the ties and burdens of her family, friends, culture, and heritage. It might be worth mentioning Sabina's partner, but I didn't particularly care for him in any way, shape, or form. The other character to mention is Karenin, the dog of... Thomas and Teresa. Karenin, named after the husband of Anna, Karenina is given to the female dog. Karenin, the dog, just like his Tolstoyan counterpart, dislikes change completely. But I will say, because I know people are going to mention that, Marley and me hardened me from a very young age. So no. Madeira exquisitely showcases how these characters' life choices, well, they don't really have a say in any of this. And in fact, by the time that the Prague Spring comes around and all these characters have to uproot themselves, well, they haven't really had a say in this. They are continually burdened with their lightness. The fact of the matter is, for Kadera, if he sees that there is no opportunity for an alternative outcome to happen, then there was only one choice to make. There is no structure, there is no meaning, and therefore we are all unbearably light. And in Kadira's exploration into the circumstances and the consequences of action, understands that there is a complexity, there is a nuance to every action. This book is a wonder and I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. And again, if you're put off by this philosophical element, know that Kadira is going to hold your hand all the way through this.